Thank you very much, Pastor Mike, for your sermon today. And as we transition to the Holy Communion portion of today's service, I want to teach just a little bit of a passage from Acts chapter 20. If you want to uh, turn there, you may. Acts chapter 20, verses 7 through 12, will be the teaching uh, since we have time. And then we will partake in the bread and the cup. Beginning with verse 7 in the 20th chapter of Acts, it says, Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart for the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room, and they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named Euthycus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. And then verse 11, And now when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten, and taken a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. And they brought the young man in alive, and they were not a little comforted. Just to recap, this is so applicable to to the Lord's Supper. In verse 7, it says that this communion was on the first day of the week. Uh, This word week is the Greek word sabbaton, uh, which is the Sabbath. Hence, the Sabbath is Sunday, and today is the Sabbath. Today is the Lord's Day. It says that they broke bread. This bread is the Greek word artos. This artos means a bread that is being raised or a raised loaf. You see where we're going with this. You see where the scriptures are going with this. That Jesus is the bread of life. He is the one that was raised from the grave. He is the one that came into this world conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the virgin birth. Jesus is the one that went to that cross where he justified and declared his church righteous before the Father. Jesus is the bread of life that was raised from the dead, that propitiated for God's elect sins, the sins of God's elect. And then he was buried on the third day. He bodily rose from the grave. And then in verse 9 it says that Euthycus fell asleep in church, falling out of the third store window where he succumbed to his fatal injuries. And then the Apostle Paul, who was an apostle then, went there and raised him from the dead. In verse 11 it says that their fellowship and church service and even communion was so lengthy that they did it throughout the evening, even to when the sun was coming up the next day. And then in verse 12 it says they brought Euthycus back into the sanctuary and they were not a little comforted, they were a lot comforted. And this word comforted is different than the word comfort that we like today. This word comforted here in the Greek is parakaleo, similar to the Holy Spirit parakaletos. And parakaleo means that they were called, they were summoned, almost like serving you a subpoena. That they were instructed, they were invited and invoked, and then they were admonished and exhorted each other to partake in the Lord's meal. Right after a man fell out of the window to his death, the service still went on. Amen? So dear people, if you are saved today, if you are born again, I implore you, I invoke you. I summon you to come to this table as we pass the plate. Pastor Mike, if you would like to pass the bread and the, and the cup now, please do so. And if you are born again, if you're in a right mind with Christ, if you are a repented follower of Christ, if you have repented from your sins, If you are in a good standing with God by not walking in unrepented sins, then you may partake of this cup and of the bread. And the notice 
The outside rain is grape juice, the inside rain is wine. And if we're saved today, know this. That we too were once dead. We may not have been medically dead like the man that fell out of the window died. But the Bible says we were all once dead in our sins and trespasses. And if you're here today and you're not saved, my dear friends, if you're here today and if you're not born again, the Bible says you are still dead in your trespasses and sins. And judgment day is coming. And we ask you to flee to God and flee to Christ and trust in Christ alone for salvation. As we, as he passes the plate and the cup around, remember that not only was I, this sinner, dead in my trespasses and sins, the Bible says that I was once a slave to my sins, but because of that vicarious, efficacious, atoning sacrifice of what Christ did on the cross for God's elect, I am now a slave to Christ rather than a slave to sin. I love the rhetorical question in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul said, The cup of the blessing, the cup, excuse me, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, speaking of born again Christians only, again, the exclusivity of this communion is for his saints, for his people. Though many are one bread and one body, that we all partake in the one bread. And then it says, For I received from the Lord that which on the night I was betrayed to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father God, we thank you for your Son, that you came down to us in the form of a man, the incarnation of Christ, God incarnate, Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, truly God and truly man, that you sent him here to satisfy and fulfill all of the law perfectly, the law that all of us broke, that we're all guilty of. And you saved us from judgment and wrath. Because of your love for your church, your love for your elect, you gave us your son who died on the cross for sinners like me and the rest of your church. We thank you, Father, for that body of Christ. We thank you, Father, for for the bread of life, which is Jesus. Amen. In the same manner, he, Jesus, took the cup after supper, after having that bread, representing the body of Christ, Jesus, the bread of life. He took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Lord of lords and King of kings, the merciful one, the Lamb of God, the Messiah, that you went to that cross and you bore my sins, that you bore God's wrath and punishment in place of me and the rest of your church, that you shed your blood on that old stained stake, that old tree, that old cross, so that we can have forgiveness and remission of our sins. Thank you for that pure, innocent, beautiful blood that you shed for your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Mike will have you stand for the doxology.